We owe a debt of gratitude to Bhikkhu Wapola for presenting the following diagram on YouTube on dependent origination or dependent coal rising as we've been calling it in the class. It is a wonderful gift of Dhamma and a beautiful presentation showing us the various intricacies of dependent co-arising. Now let's examine the diagram more closely. Taking a look at the top, we see the five senses in blue boxes, and looking to the right, we see the mind. The Buddha included the mind as one of the senses. Next, we have consciousness of the six senses. That is, consciousness corresponding to the eye and its objects, the ear and sound, nose, smell, tongue, taste, body, touch, and mind and mind objects. Now we have to remember in Buddhism that the term consciousness is used in a somewhat more restrictive form than we're used to using the term in, in the English language. Uh, the Buddha is not talking about being conscious of, being conscientious as a person, having a higher consciousness, and, and that type of thing. Notice the word ignorance in the lower right-hand corner. We've talked about this many times. This is ignorance of the Four Noble Truths and our potential to find happiness and contentment in our lives. And this ignorance leads us to the continuous rounds of rebirth, death, rebirth, death, called samsara. One could almost say that ignorance is the fuel of our cosmic folly. Let's examine what transpires in the Buddhist view after death. Notice the loss of the five senses, but certain elements of the mind remain, which we'll be discussing in a minute. Let's focus on mental formations to the left of the diagram in orange. And remember that mental formations can also be called karmic formations. And karmic formations are the karma we generate through bodily action, verbal action, action throughout our lives through intention. Now notice that this karma has been set in motion. Let's be clear that this is karma that is not part of some type of rebirth package, so to speak, but karma that has been set in motion in one's life. Dependent origination holds that your last thought is embedded in mind consciousness. After conception, we have the arising of name and form. And at birth we have the hyperdevelopment of the six senses and their facilitator, contact. The act of consciousness constitutes contact. That is, the sense organ, the object or events, meet. These inputs are then transmitted to three of the five aggregates feeling, mental formations, and perception. We have to be careful here in terms of the word feeling. The Buddha was speaking of sensation, that is, sensation in three forms, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral, and then a mixture of those forms. He was not speaking of feeling as we use it in the English language of being upset, happy, or sad. He was speaking purely of sensation. We are now entering what you might consider the processing unit of this causal matrix and exposing some of its various feedback loops. The first of these loops is found between mental formations, feeling, and perception. And there are more to be found as we continue along the chain. Next, through unwise attention, we have craving and we have clinging.
Craving is sometimes referred to as negative desire, and clinging is referred to as attachment. And that is attachment to things that we take pleasure in, and that obsession to want more and more and more. Now, notice the dotted arrow coming from clinging, or number nine in our diagram, and moving up into mental formations. And then through intention, which translates into verbal or bodily action, produces karma. And along with the preceding processes, produces becoming. Becoming is the fruitation of the ego's complex game of building itself up. Notice this ego is constantly changing, constantly in flux, being affected by preceding events, causes, and conditions. Birth is next in our causal chain. Now here we're not speaking of the birth of a child. We're speaking of the birth of the preceding identity. And this is really elegant on the part of Bhikkhu Wapola, as he is superimposing our momentary existence with our existence throughout a lifetime in the same exact location, thus depicting the interplay between the two in a most relevant fashion. And lastly, we have sickness, old age, and death. This completes the chain of causation, independent, co-arising.